Welcome to a brand new carp lake. Um, it's one that Embryo has taken on. Um, it's at Crown Country Park in Peterborough. A very, very deep lake that probably most people wouldn't have taken on. It goes down to 45 feet in places here. Um, but the guys have done an absolutely fantastic job of creating swims around a lake that really has never been properly fished. And last winter, we stopped 370 fish into here, anything between 10 pound and 25 pound. Um, and they've done absolutely brilliantly in a short space of time. They've all darkened up. And uh, we've had quite a few people fishing on here illegally because there are no signs up and they just didn't know that they weren't allowed to fish. But all that has changed now. Um, and we're literally the first people to come down here and fish it properly. I'm with my mate John, aka the Grebo. Um, he's uh, basically lived in Ibiza. He used to work for Corda many years ago, and uh, he now lives in Ibiza and has done for over 10 years. So he hasn't fished for absolutely ages. So I've cobbled a load of gear together for him, and uh, we're going to have a couple of days social. We know we're going to catch a few. They're virgin fish. They've never been fished for really. Um, it's been getting baited by a new guy that's working for Embryo. Um, Rich has been absolutely brilliant um, coming around here several times a week, just explaining to the locals what's happening. Um, that's kept the rubbish at bay because it was quite untidy at times. And he's been feeding the spots and he's been feeding the swims that we're actually in now out on the island. So we're going to talk through the tactics of how to fish a deep lake in the summer. Uh, obviously, we know we're going to catch a few fish, so it's not like uh, these are groundbreaking tactics that are going to empty every lake, but you will be able to transfer them into your own fishing uh, and hopefully get a few more bites. But more important than anything else, we're going to have a bit of a social. We're going to show you what this lake holds in store and hopefully we're going to get a load of new members. So I'm going to get a few bags tied up, just little tiny um, funnel web bags. I'm using the boily funnel web and just literally a thimble full of pellets in each one. And I'm going to talk through the pellet mix that I'm using as well. And um, just basically show you um, how to get the best out of it and how to get as many bags as possible out of one system. Got a little bit of goo going on to these ones, the, uh, the spicy squid. I know if we just use pellets on their own, we would get bites because that's what the fish were being fed on. Um, but a very, very good angler that I met recently has done really, really well on a Lynch Hill complex um, using pellets like this with the spicy squid. So, you know, it's new to me as well, that tactic. So I'm going to have a go with that. So I'll get a couple of these tied and then uh, get John to cast out because he's absolutely raring to go. There's been fish showing all over him and um, I'm sure he's going to catch on within a few minutes. See if we can do this. First one in a long time. The two mirrors just come through literally under my feet. There's another one just going through there now. They're really on this pellet. We've put some pellet out for the last couple of hours and not fished while we've been getting set up. It's a really good tactic to obviously draw the fish in. You know, they're, they're seeing pellet all the time here because we're baiting it up. So literally underarm throwing it out because it's 12 foot deep there, it drops off really, really quickly. And then just a little tiny bag of pellet and a little tiny pink pop-up. This one's an almond pop-up on a little tiny helicopter rig. And I'm just gonna swing it out literally into that that sort of 12 feet of water where the pellet's gone. And uh, with this many fish about. There we go. Donk. Don't think it's gonna be very long. First carp in 12 years. Lovely. Thank you very much. 
Nice Brilliant. one, mate. Well done, mate. Brilliant. 47. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is a 15 pound, four ounce common brass. Nice. Good work. Straight off the bat. <laughs> I think we've got one on. Whoa. Well, how about that? Didn't even get the second rod out. Um, it's going to be pretty uh, amazing fishing over here for the first few months while the fish are, you know, sort of uh, uneducated. Um, and with them being baited up like this, oh, it's taking you right around the corner. Oof. Absolutely charged off. Didn't know it was hooked, this fish. Bobbin was going up and down, up and down. That's mad. There's another one following it. Right. I could net two at once here. There's a little, little fully scaled following it. Come on, mate. In you get. Bosh, got him, wicked. It's always nice to get the first one from a new lake, even though obviously it's as loaded as it is over here with loads of fish and no angling pressure. But um, when that first one goes in the net, it always feels good. There you go, what a way to start. My first ever Crown Country Park fish and it's a 20 pounder to boot. 20 pound, four ounces, this one. And you can see it's probably a female, still got a belly on it, so it probably hasn't spawned. And uh, within a couple of years, I would expect this one to be over 30 pounds. But look at the scaling, what a creature. We chose these swims mainly based on the depth in front of them. Out here, it's sort of 13 foot, a couple of rod lengths out, which is still deep enough. And then probably 30 yards out, it's about 27, 28 foot. So it slopes off gradually to there. Because it's summertime, we're gonna be fishing right up the shelf in the shallow water. And this really is the shallowest bit of the lake. I put John in the swim next door, um, basically because there's some really shallow water off the back of the islands there. And we know the fish get in all around those islands at this time of the year. We've seen loads of them in the shallow water behind the islands over the last few weeks. So I knew it was a banker spot that he was gonna get fish from. There's another swim at the other end of the islands as well which is equally as good and you're basically underarming your rods literally up the back of the islands the fish are coming through backwards and forwards into the shallow water it's a brilliant patrol route to intercept fish and just fishing little bags like he has and a sprinkling of bait has got him loads of bites out in front of me right under the rod tips it's probably 13 14 foot that's where i'm getting my bites from if i go out 30 yards it's 27 foot and at this time of the year you wouldn't want to be fishing in that depth you want to be in the shallower water but as it gets towards autumn end of september october november even december you're going further and further down the slope into deeper and deeper water as the fish basically migrate down into deeper water as the surface layer is cool obviously it stays that little bit warmer lower down and the fish just move further and further down and you know you could be catching out of here maybe in 30 feet 35 feet of water in december and catching really well so that's my biggest tip Fish shallow water in the spring and in the summer and fish the deeper water in the autumn and the winter until it all changes round. January, February time, obviously the water's at its coldest. Any rays of sunshine we get, the fish are up in the water and really in somewhere as deep as this, it's gonna be adjustable zig fishing at that time of the year. So we've chosen swims that are also comfortable, they're social, we're only about 15 yards apart so we can spend a bit of time in each other's swims having a cup of tea and we're not miles away from our rods. If the shallow part of the lake was on the opposite side, that is where we'd be fishing. Really, it's been coincidental that the wind's been blowing over here. If I was gonna start on here once the syndicate opens, I would always have a good look round. Just don't just jump into the nearest swim 
and the water's so clear, it's absolutely like tap water. You will see the fish cruising around. If you put Polaroid sunglasses on, wear a cap like I've got on now, and try and get the sun behind you, you can see probably down into 15 feet or more of water. And if you stand still long enough by the trees, if there's fish around, they will ghost past, and that is obviously the place to start. So my advice on this kind of lake, that is gonna get a fair bit of pressure, is really let the fish tell you where to fish. If they're showing in an area, get straight in there. If people have had loads of bites and it's gone quiet, chances are they've moved off to another bit of the lake. Get on your toes, have a look round, and I reckon if you fish really mobile, you're always gonna be on fish. Have a nice mirror, pretty one. This one's on a little tiny 10 mil white pop-up, one of the mainline ones. And I've put a prototype goo on it. But to be honest, with this many fish in here, I don't think it's really gonna matter what you've got on the end. Any decent bait will work. you come into the net number two bosh lovely he's angry i was going to say she's angry look spawned out this one but uh, another 20 super lucky 20 pound four ounces again Completely different strain to the last one, different shape and different colour. And uh, with 370 new fish in here, some of which have already swum through into the back lake, but you know, there's probably 300 left in here now. And uh, with this kind of variety, it's going to be some lake. This is on a little tiny 12 mil squid pop up, little bag of pellets, just with a bit of squid goo over the top. And uh, that's what did the business. Easy fella. Nice little 10 pound four. It's gonna be a pretty fish when it's about 25 pounds, isn't it? You don't really need an expensive set of rods and reels to fish on crown. 30 yards out there, it's 35 foot deep. So you're never really gonna be casting any further than that. So any set of rods and reels will do. In this situation, I'm using my lighter set of rods. So my 12 foot, three pound Longbow X45s. 
a lovely forgiving rod, nice for underarming and casting up to about 80, 90 yards with accuracy. Um, but when you're playing fish, they really hoop over. And they're coupled with a cross cast X reel, um, really nice reels for the money. They look like a much more expensive reel than they actually are. They're loaded up with 15 pound touchdown, which is a low stretch mono. I like to feel the lead hit the bottom. You watch when, even when I'm swinging them out and I've got a bag on, I'll be feeling it down into deep water and just feeling that donk on the bottom. So I know I'm not landing any weed or any soft bottom. And 15 pound is more than adequate for this sort of fishing. I wouldn't go much lighter than that because we don't know what snags are out there on the steep marginal shelves. 15 pounds really abrasive resistant and it's gonna last a long time. And if you use it for a couple of seasons and it gets frayed up and you keep tearing some off, tearing some off, what you can actually do is reverse it onto another reel and start again. So the stuff that's on the bottom at the moment, there's nothing wrong with. You can wind it back onto another empty spool and then start again. And you'll see also that I've got the rod set quite a long way back from the water's edge. And that's basically so that the other lines don't get in the way when I start playing a fish. So they're drooping down nice and slack off the rod tip. They're going down the marginal shelf, hugging the bottom. I'm getting the odd liner as the fish are coming in close. But when I'm playing a fish, and that's the most important bit, when I'm playing a fish, I'm not gonna pick up the other lines because they're along the bottom and the rod tips are right back. If my rods were fished right out of the front of the swim and the lines were sort of semi-tight, then every time the fish charges up and down in front of me, I'll be picking the other rods up. So by having it drooping down, the bobbins are hanging down nice and slack. Because I'm using stows, basically the, the line is basically holding the weight of the bobbin from the reel down to the bobbin itself. So in front of the buzzer, the line's pretty much slack. It's the reel that's supporting the weight of the bobbin. And when you're fishing so close in, when you get a bite, they absolutely tear off anyway. So there's no fear of getting drop backs. And fishing like that means that the fish basically keep away from the line. You don't get too many liners. And when you're actually playing a fish, you don't pick the other lines up. So it's been long enough now. It's probably been an hour without a bite. And when there's loads of fish in a lake and you've not had action for a while, it's worth refreshing a rod. I'm just going to do one. I'm going to do the left hand rod. I've seen a fish show out there earlier on. So I'm going to bring this one in, put another bag on it, chuck it back out, a little bit more bait over the top. But if you are fishing in deep water close in, I recommend you bring everything back, fish nice and slack, and you'll definitely get more takes. Okay. Well, good morning. Um, we had a very, very eventful uh, afternoon yesterday afternoon. Um, I had a bite on the right hand rod. Um, it took me round what we thought was a tree stump out there um, and unfortunately cut me off. And uh, our new fisheries officer, um, Richard, basically came back to see us. He'd been doing the work around the lake and opening up some of the swims, um, along with some brilliant work that Buck and Rob have done in creating the, uh, the bridge to come across here and some of the platforms to go out into the lake. So Richard was basically just finishing that work off by opening the reeds up and just making sure that your line wasn't draping over the top of the reeds and then down to your spot. So when you do get a bite, you can land every single fish. So he's done some brilliant work there, um, but he sort of got a bee in his bonnet about this snag out there and um, ended up getting in and um, basically trying to uh, um, cut the snag off at the base um, with sort of a, a makeshift long saw. Um, that wasn't really touching it, didn't seem to be um, going into it at all. And normally with wood, you know, you start, it starts to bite and you can cut through it, even if you, you're on a long handle. But that wasn't working at all. But he managed to pull it back towards him a little bit. Um, and we then realised it wasn't wood, it was probably made of metal. 
um, and uh, after a load of to and fro in, um, we actually got the tow rope from my car and um, brought it down here and basically uh, Richard hooked it over the end of this thing that was poking out of the bottom, um, slid it down, um, pulled the, the um, pole away because we just tacked it on with a little bit of um, um, gaffer tape um, and then tried to basically pull it in. Um, but it would not move and you know I was holding the pole, Richard's holding my, um, my way crook um, and we're basically trying to pull this thing out of the bottom, well he is, I'm just hanging on for dear life and uh, it just wouldn't move and then two of the other guys that fish some of our other lakes and patrol this one um, came down and um, AD basically had a block and tackle um, at home for, for moving snags and for moving trees and all that sort of thing. So he came back, we rigged it up and um, it was uh, proper strenuous work for the boys but um, we basically, because it was lassoed around this snag, we were able to hook it up to the block and tackle and basically inch it out further and further out of the bottom and about an hour after they started, after some very, very hard work and some determination, they got it out. And while all this is going on, John Boy next door has ended up bagging a 26 and a half pounder. Um, probably one of the biggest fish that we stocked in here over the winter. Um, it looks to me like a VS fish, um, a harrow dink sort of cross, big shoulders on it. That will go into 30 pounds, I would imagine, probably by the end of this year. So, um, you know, there's some really nice ones to go at in here. There's a real mixed bag, everything from 10 pound, you know, up to sort of upper 20. And, uh, you know, I think the, the bites today are going to come thick and fast. I've just put three rods out. Um, now that snag's gone off the right-hand side, um, it ended up being a bit of conveyor belt that they used to bring the, uh, the clay out of here to make the bricks with. Um, and uh, now that's gone, I can put two rods down the right-hand side because that was more productive. Little white pop-ups on both of them. Little tiny PVA bag of broken up pellet, just with a little bit of that squid goo over the top of it and um, we'll see how we get on. I baited up really heavy last night when we finished. Um, there was no point putting the rods out again after all that commotion, so I thought I'd just aim a load of boilie in, um, a bit of pellet and stuff as well, and I'll put a bit more pellet out this morning um, with the hope of just drawing the fish back in again. There's not, not anything like as many fish showing. I thought this morning when we first got up, they'd be bouncing around all over that boilie that I put out there, but they haven't really been doing that. Um, but as the day goes on, I think it's better and better during the day where uh, the water's clear. You know, these bits out in front are really shallow by comparison to the rest of the lake. I'm fishing in about 12 foot, you know, and some of the bits here go down to 50 foot. So, um, you know, it bodes well for daytime bites. Um, let's see how we get on. Well, like a wally, I forgot to turn the buzzer on. Um, and uh, this rod sat out there all morning with nothing. And I've put a running rig on and I've had a take. Well, check that out. What an absolutely beautiful miracarp. Just over 12 pounds, this one. Loads of growing potential in it. You can see it's already developing shoulders and these things need feeding. We're putting pellets in just the same as the guys do when they come around and feed them for us before the syndicate opens. But when it does open, the syndicate members are gonna be able to buy a pellet at the same price we pay per tonne. So that works out about a pound a kilo. And what we hope is that members are all gonna buy loads of sacks of pellet and just like us when they're fishing, be throwing it in by the scoopful. These things get loads of nutrition out of it. They grow on and one day they'll be 30 pound. Well, it is action stations. Um, 
Rod's just sat there for a couple of hours this afternoon. Nothing was happening. Um, we had a real good look round in the margins and uh, just didn't see anything. So I decided to wind in and um, basically go on the hunt and also plumb a few of the swims on the far side of the lake because the, uh, the sort of general consensus was that they're too deep to actually fish. And while some of them get deep very, very quickly, I mean, within two rod lengths of the bank, it's 30 foot deep in some places, 20 yards out, it's 40 foot deep. Um, so yeah, for this time of the year, you know, you wouldn't want to be fishing in them swims at those depths. You could fish adjustable zigs and get loads of bites, but um, you know, we want to be fishing on the bottom. That's what we've come here to do. Um, and I've just found an absolutely killer spot in one of the swims that really everybody had written off. It's down the right hand margin. It's only 10 foot deep, just off the reeds. And there seems to be quite a large flat ledge before it drops off into the 30 foot abyss. It's pretty small, so I'm only gonna be able to fish two rods there. So I'm gonna do that one, basically to prove that you can get bites out of those swims in the summer. And then John's gonna go right in the corner, literally where the cars are parked. It's a bit of a steep slope to get down, so it's a bit of ag to move. Um, but looking around there, there are fish cruising up and down in front of the reed line as it drops away into sort of 12, 15 feet of water. There's tons of them up there. Um, so I've had a good plumb round, left and right in that swim, literally underarming it like we are here. It's about the same depth, 12 foot, and I know it does drop down into much deeper water, but it does the same thing here, and we've had plenty of bites here. So we've got a couple of hours left of this afternoon, a few hours tomorrow morning as well to get a few bites, but when you know you sh you're in the wrong place and there's somewhere better to be, you've got to move. So that's what we're going to do. Well, if you live in and around the Peterborough area, I'm sure you're dying to know um, what the setup's going to be here, how much it's going to cost to fish, um, and when you're allowed to be on, that sort of thing. At the moment, we're going to open it up as a much larger membership than we would do on a normal syndicate because it's such a new lake. The fish have only just gone in here, and what we really need here is we need people on site. Um, it can be a bit like the Wild West down here on bank holiday weekends, lots of rubbish, people not really treating the praise properly. And um, with a few anglers on here, I think that's all going to change. The work Richard's done around here already has been fantastic, um, you know, winning over the hearts and minds of the locals. There's a lot of local people that really care about this park and all credit to them, they're doing litter picking and that sort of thing. And what we hope is together we can change the attitudes of the other people that, you know, are not treating it in the best way they could. Um, and already that's happening. People are piling their rubbish up by the bins rather than leaving it everywhere. Um, and um, the place is in a much better condition just for two weeks of human traffic around here. So, you know, when there's half a dozen anglers on here every single day, um, hopefully that's going to improve dramatically. Richard's already cleared up loads of rubbish, shopping trolleys and just piles and piles of beer bottles and cans and everything all strewn in the swims. Um, but, you know, hopefully in the future with the anglers here, that's not going to build up. And obviously one of our rules at Embryo is you're responsible for your swim. So even if it's not your litter, you need to be taking it home. And I always search around and try and take at least one more piece home than I bring with me, because I think the lake is a better place for me having been there. So money wise, we're going to start it off really cheap, 75 quid a ticket. We're going to run two rotors, just like we do on most of our embryo syndicates. So the weekday rotor starts at 9am Monday morning, runs through to Friday morning and then it swaps over. So the weekend rotor starts Friday morning and you can fish any time all the way through to Monday morning again. So the weekday boys have got four nights at their disposal. The weekend guys have got three nights at their disposal. And we're going to limit the membership 
to probably about 50 to 75 weekend guys because they tend to fish more often than the weekdays um, and probably 100 weekday tickets to start off with and see how we go. There's nine swims on here at the moment. We might build a couple more, but as you can see from the work that Buck and Rob have done, you know, there's been a lot of effort put into this um, to make these places fishable because in front of this swim here, it drops off to like 25 feet within a rod length of the bank. Um, so they've had to build the stages out. You're going to need stage stands or, or a pod on these swims. Around the other side, obviously, it's not necessary. It goes straight into the ground. Um, but, you know, there's a bit of a trek to get down to this one because of the steps, because we've got such a high bank behind us. But that is the nature of the beast. So what we're hoping is with high membership numbers, we're going to have loads of people here. Loads of baits going to go in. You know, there's always going to be eyes on the water, making sure nothing goes wrong. And basically, as the fish grow, and, and the membership sort of settles down and we find out the people that really love the place and they keep renewing, um, what will happen over a period of the next few years is we'll probably drop the number of members, increase the price so our revenue is about the same. Um, and then once the otter fence has gone up, which is going to be this autumn, we couldn't do it at the moment um, because of the ground nesting birds. So once that's all done, um, the otter fence will go up. It is a massive project to do this. The terrain and everything that we've got to deal with here is... Um, just biblical so um, all credit to the boys when they get that done uh, we have had fish um, taken by otters already we reckon we've lost at least 10 um, uh, a female otter um, and uh, her two cubs were seen on the back lake which is within this ticket as well that's only about three acres um, some of the fish have actually got through from here in a bit of water about that deep they've pushed their way through which means there's about 70 fish in the back lake about 300 in here minus the 10 or so that we've lost. We hope that none have been taken by the Eastern Europeans because there's been no signs up round here and the fish are very visible when it's hot. Um, so fingers crossed, the ones they've been catching, they've been putting back. Um, and with 300 fish in this lake, sort of up to mid twenties, I would expect there to be a number of 30 pounders in here within 12 months. And what I'm hoping is it turns into another Bundy's. You know, that's a fabulous lake, very similar to this, not quite as big in size, but just as deep. And the fish there have got to upper 40s and they are absolutely black in there. So I love deep waters. You know, I think the fish always look fantastic. The fishing's really interesting because of the depth. And often you find you can get bites continuously off a spot. You just spook the fish back out into deep water. They sit out there for a bit. They come back in on the grub and you get more and more. So it's a very, very interesting prospect, this lake. Really beautiful place to be. And I think with lots of involvement from a good membership, it's just going to get better and better. This is what carl fishing's all about. Look at that sunset. And uh, it just shows you, I'm sorry you're seeing the back of me, but um, it goes down to about 20 foot straight off the rod tip here. And uh, there's no way our cameraman's gonna be standing in front of me. Um, but what, what a difference, a different swim makes. Only been out there about 10 minutes. Just cast down to the right hand side that ledge that I found with a marker float earlier on that just sticks out a little bit from the reeds and uh, it's roared off. off then getting that net bosh got him ah oh, wicked well check that one out what a way to finish the session after the big move and it was a load of effort to get round here i can tell you it's always nice to get one it proves that you were in the wrong spot and now you're in the right one and what a couple of lakes this is going to be in the future when these things get up to 35 maybe even 45 pound it's going to be some place. I love deep water fishing. The fish are always in immaculate condition and they just grow to huge sizes as well. It takes a little bit longer, 
but they last absolutely forever. I'm sure all these swimmers are gonna produce loads of gorgeous fish like this. And if you do get a ticket, remember, keep feeding these guys, and they're only getting bigger.